Hello, everybody. My name is Herb Feinweber, and uh, I'm one of the lab instructors for Chem 102 this spring. I'm going to give you a short conceptual overview of what we're doing in lab this week. So we're looking at kinetics, and we're studying this molecule. It's a little complicated. It's called crystal violet, and it's violet in color. And you're going to add a hydroxide ion and then it will go to a colorless form where the hydroxide bonds to this central carbon. And so by looking at the violet color going away, we can determine the speed of the reaction. So the rate of the reaction is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of the crystal violet to its order, we'll call it alpha, and then times the concentration of the hydroxide to its order, we'll call beta. And the goal of this experiment is to determine the rate constant alpha and beta. So how do we do that? First thing we're going to do is flood the concentration of the hydroxide so that it's pretty much a constant with respect to the concentration of the crystal violet. So the crystal violet will be much lower in concentration. So if the hydroxide is essentially a constant then the rate becomes this new constant, we'll call it K effective, times just the concentration of the crystal violet to its order, alpha, where now K effective is defined as K times a hydroxide to the beta. Now when we plot our data, which will be basically the absorbance data for our crystal violet, how much light it's absorbing, versus time, uh, then we can look at the functional form and figure out what alpha is, whether it's first order or second order will be the two things that we're trying to figure out. Um, you'll also be able to, depending on the fit that works, know what the k-effective is. So we'll have a value for that. Now that's for a particular flooded value of the hydroxide. But how do we figure out beta? Because we'll still want beta. So the other thing we can do is run a second run where we have still flooded hydroxide. Sorry, I'm missing a minus there. Um, but a different value for the hydroxide. Maybe we'll cut it in half. Now in that case, if we have two different hydroxides, we'll have two different k-effectives. We can take the logarithm of both sides of this, so the logarithm of our k-effective is equal to, and then if you remember your rules of logarithms, the beta will come down out front, so beta times ln of the hydroxide concentration plus ln k, in other words, y equals mx plus b. We'll only have two points because we're only doing two runs this year just to save time because of COVID. Um, but two points to terminal line, so that should be fine. So if you look at your rise over run, so your change in the Y, the logarithm of the K effective, over run, so the change in the logarithm of the hydroxide, rise over run, you'll get your slope, and that will be beta. And so you'll figure out, is beta 1 or is beta 2? Um, you'll also be able to, from either one of the runs, once you know what your slope is, calculate your LNK. And in fact, you could calculate it for both runs and maybe take an average and see how close you get. So then we know our beta, our alpha, and our K. That's really all we need to know. A quick note about, uh, this is more a review but about dilution. So we're going to make some solutions that are a combination of solutions. So let's say, for example, you had 10 milliliters of 40 micromolar crystal violet chloride and 8 milliliters of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide and 2 milliliters of 0.2 molar sodium nitrate. And you have them separate at first because you don't want the reaction to start. And then you, after you dump them together, the reaction starts and you'll put them into your cuvette and you'll start to monitor the color as it goes away. But you need to know what was the initial concentrations. So this will be important in your analysis. The key to doing this type of problem is to remember you're, you have a new volume. And the new volume we will treat as just the sum of these three volumes. So we'll assume that volumes are additive. So... Once you know what your new volume is, call that your V2, then you've got your, for any one of these, you've got an M1, V1, and you know a V2, which is the sum of the three, so you can calculate your M2. So you can calculate your new volume for the 
crystal vial chloride, the sodium hydroxide, and the sodium nitrate. All right, that should be enough to get you started. Dr. Meiskens is going to tell you a little bit more in the next video about some techniques to keep in mind.